sure because they're pretty tricky and guess what was there? Really sensitive about how we do these things. Oh, I think it's up on the top there. That was an astounding success. It's amazing. So it's new video time. I thought I'd approach this one a little bit differently. I'm after a particular species of bird. They are particularly susceptible to like human interference. So I thought I'd show you sort of how I go about photographing them. Like it's all very good seeing the videos where I go out for, you know, three or four trips and you see the culmination of all that in one video. But it's a bit of a lie really, because like that's not how it works. Like I often go out on the first trip and I won't see anything or I might just locate the subject. So I thought it'd be good to break it down a bit, approach things a bit differently and show you the lengths that I go to to try and avoid disturbing wildlife and the lengths I go to to try and get a shot. Next time you see me, I'll be out on the moors and I'll have my standard, you know, usual hat on, but I am very whispery because I'm where I think the wildlife is straight away. So first one of the series, do we get it? Do we have any luck? Let's find out. When I'm back out in the North York Moors, um, I thought I'd try my chance at a ring oozel. I'm not sure because they're pretty tricky and the thing we have to bear in mind with those, obviously, like all the species that I seem to shoot, as in photograph, is that they are on the UK red list. So we have to be really sensitive about how we do these things. So today, really, as you'll see by the weather, it's not the best. Um, very misty, but I'm coming up for a bit of a recce just to see what is what and if there's anything about. Firstly, and most importantly, I'm going to take my time and sit here and watch. It's one of those little bit of a brush jobs again for me. So it's uh, now quarter past six, gets dark about twenty past eight, sun goes down at twenty past eight. There's this spot here, which I believe ring oozles have been seen at. But yeah, I'm just going to sit, scout it out, I can hear lots of little birdies around and just get the feel for the place and if nothing else it's beautiful, especially on this um, Misty day. So I've got to be honest, at this point, I wasn't holding out too much hope. The last sort of records of any ring oozles up there I could find have been 2016 or 2017, I think. I was sort of losing hope a little bit. I was sitting around, there was not a lot going on. And I was beginning to think that perhaps these ring oozles hadn't made it back or whatever, like they are on the decline. There's only about 7,500 pairs um, left. But I'll tell you what, should we join me sitting in the mist on a rock and see how I got on? Let's do it. I'd just been shooting that bit of B-roll and I walked back to where I put my bag and guess what was there? A ring oozle. So I have cleared well away from there just in case its nest is there. And I'm now sitting here and waiting. And if I don't see it again. I'm probably going to clear back even further because I'm worried that I might be around where its nest is. I'm just going to give it 10 minutes here. If I haven't seen it again, I'm going to clear off because I don't want to stop it getting to its nest. So I pulled right back now because um, I gave it a good 10 minutes. I didn't see any more of them. Oh, I think it's up on the top there. What do they look like? Well, they're like a upland blackbird, essentially. So like your garden blackbird, and they've got a white, white bit on their chest. I think I obviously was a little bit too close there, so I made the right decision to move away because I think I've seen the spot that they're nesting at now, and every so often they keep flying into it and they hadn't done it when I was sitting where I was but now they've moved back into it. You need to give the birds a bit of space because they just try and live their lives aren't they? Day to day feeding their kiddies and that just like the rest of us. I wouldn't like someone poking their camera in my front room if I'm trying to feed my kids. So I know that I'm always banging on about 
you know, not interfering with wildlife in my videos. It's easy to think, oh, I'm just one person with a camera who's going to photograph this. A little bit of disturbance doesn't really matter. But like, get 10 of them a day, 10 of those people, 10 of people like me, and all of a sudden you've got a day long disturbance. So I, I think also there's a lot of people out there who are trying to like help these species and monitor them and all that sort of business. And they're putting a lot of work in. So you don't want to go and disturb their work, do you? That's why I kept moving if I hadn't seen it for a while. If, if you don't see it, move back. If you don't see it, move back further because that gives the bird space to come back in and you can see that actually you might have been sitting where they want to be feeding. If you're in any doubt, get right back, get your binoculars out or whatever and watch it from there where you're not going to be any disturbance at all. But we're going to return to me now where there might be some sort of exciting development. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I did get a shot. Not a very good shot. But it was never going to be a good shot today because the weather is quite atrocious and it's raining now as well but i'm just going to sit here and watch them for a little while and see see what happens and it's this sort of thing where you probably need to develop a plan so i think i definitely need a hide if i wanted to get any closer because i'm just not prepared to to disturb disturb them really and uh you know you shouldn't be I'm going to sit here, they might get used to me, get a bit curious, they see me as no threat if I've been here and not trying to chase them down or anything, and they might come to me. This lens is probably getting a bit smeary because it's raining, but yeah, I'm just going to give them a little while, enjoy it and see what happens. wet, my kit's quite wet, and I'm headed back to the car. But for me, that was an astounding success. I know the images I got weren't great, and you know, that wasn't what I came out here for. What I did come out here for was to locate some ring oozles, and I found them, and that's, that is amazing. Um, so next up, I've got to try and think of how I can sort of turn this into a project even if I want to turn it into a project it's quite a drive for me out here my time is a bit limited at the minute but you know it's um it's really good when you put a bit of research into practice and it actually pays off like that is that's what it's all about really that's what it's all about for me anyway I know the photographs weren't great but that kind of wasn't the point of them today um yeah so if you've enjoyed it then make sure you like and subscribe and until next time have fun doing what you do see you later so that was it day one of my excursion into photographing ring oozles and by the end of that day I, w I was pretty excited man I'd got a picture of it and that was more than I thought I'd get actually and that's a that's a great feeling when you do go out like I said in the video when you go out looking for something in particular and you find it through research and patience, uh, that's really good. And to do it where I feel like I didn't cause much disturbance as well, uh, that was good as well. Um, so I did go out on a second day and I didn't video this one because I was, I was just concentrated on trying to figure this situation out. And I put some put full camouflage on, put myself down in the heather, I had my so I was laying down, I had my camera on my bag and I sat and waited again, sort of a bit far away from where I thought their nesting thing is, which I'm pretty sure is where it is. And um, yeah, spotted this spot where I'd seen him on before and I just concentrated on that and I managed to get a photograph. Now, I was pretty happy with that as well because I was nervous that he still might realise I was around um, might scare him off but at one point he flew within six inches of my head and was not put, didn't even clock me at all because I was in my camouflage and I was still and I was quiet and so yeah that approach I think worked really well I was still quite a long way away wasn't a close shot by any means but it was a step up 
So that was day two. And this is often how these things go. All, all the videos I've done, if you watch any of my previous ones, again, it's not so much because they're always available, but the ones with the curlews and the tree creepers and all that sort of stuff, they're all multiple day videos sort of condensed into one. And um, yeah, it's these sort of slow increments of you gaining knowledge every time you go to these locations where these things are it begins to pay off and it's you know it's a, it is a really good feeling at the moment i am considering whether that's enough you know i've got a photograph of it so i have to ask myself seriously the question is it worth me going up there to disturb these things to try and get a better photograph and you know i'm not sure if it is at the moment really i probably will if i think i can do it without causing any disturbance but I'm going to have to think long and hard about how I do that and I think that will probably involve an early morning going up in the dark and getting myself stationed before they're even out of the nest because you know like I say these are pretty fragile species in the UK and you've got to take it seriously and you know that's it early morning laying down in heather <laughs> it's, you know is that is that worth it for me and is it worth it for the potential of disturbing a bird but if I think I can do it and if I think I can get a good picture out of it then without causing any disturbance then I'll probably game to be honest so keep watching see how I get on I might get sidetracked by another species by then but you know up what I've got already I'm pretty happy with it would be great to get that banger shot that really that one that you're really happy with to get that full um, pay off for the time I've spent on it but you know that isn't what it's about really it's about learning you know it's about learning about this species even more spending a bit of time with it and getting to know it and yeah they are one of the fly tier ones anyway getting sidetracked again now like I say before if you enjoyed this please do like and subscribe I'm going to try and get on more videos but life is busy um, and I shall see you lot next time. Cheers.